They're from Caitlin Sheridan. Ka- Did I just say Caitlin Sheridan? I said Caitlin Sheridan. Wow. I'm Ramsey Abushala. <laughs> this is a- no, we got to do this one more time. We got to do, do this it one more time. Yeah. What is going on? And welcome to another episode of the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. I'm Ramsey Abushala, editor of UrbanPitch.com. To my right, once again, hey, he's back. back after a one-week absence. The director of Vibes himself, Julio Monterosa. Julio, we're in a new studio today. What's I know, it? new space. Yeah, I mean, we got a new space going on. It's a little bit hot. We got to figure out what's going on with the AC, but, you know, we're making it work. We're making it grind. Uh, but, uh, hey, another week, another pro. <laughs> yeah, another so, hey. pro, but uh, today, no, no. Today is not just a pro. We have, we, have, uh, we have a legend in the building. We have, we have you know, a higher status, I heard, a gold I heard, medal. I heard she's better than Drake in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> She's a gold medalist, the first gold medalist. I mean, we've had some pretty, like, pretty Legendary elite people. guests. We've had, we've had some, some, some illustrious guests on the show, but none of them can say they have an Olympic gold medal. Uh, that's why we're very excited to have, uh, from the San Diego Wave, of goalkeeper, fellow member of the goalkeeper uh, union, GK Nation. <laughs> uh, we got Kaylin Sheridan. Kaylin, thank you so much for, uh, for, for taking the time to t- talk with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I am definitely not in Drake's category. Which <laughs> <laughs> And you gotta wish. speak. We gotta speak it into existence. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. He yeah, does have. Yeah. He does have a gold medal. Uh, yeah, Drake is not. I mean, he wishes he does. He, he wishes he does. I've seen those uh, those videos of him playing basketball in his house, where he, he gets his friends to play fake defense on him, so he can win. <laughs> yeah. so he, yeah. <laughs> he wishes he had a gold medal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's doing everything he can to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about that Olympic experience because not a lot of people can say um, they've been to an Olympics, let alone uh, have have a medal. What was that whole? Because I know that you know there's stories about the Olympic Village. It gets pretty crazy. What was that whole Olympic experience like uh, for you? And 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 take us uh, through that a little bit. Yeah, it was it was pretty wild. I think it was unlike any other Olympics because of COVID, and mm. we got really locked in because of it. We were literally we were we travel around because soccer has like different stadiums all over the country which is which is great because you get to see a lot of the country but then you're living in hotels and because of covid we were like Mm. locked into the hotels like you weren't allowed to go outside unless you had like um unless you had one of the people coming with you and you had to be like in a mask outside it was wild um so you really just kind of got confined by yourself um but the village was pretty wild it was a it was a great experience. <laughs> who, was yeah, host, who was hosting beer pong in the room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty wild. Like, cardboard beds and uh, just weird. But I think because of everything that had happened, just being in the village at the end made it all worth it because you got to enjoy it and feel the real Olympic experience a little bit. Mm. Yeah, was there like beef between uh, different different countries or different teams or anything like that? Where were, were you guys like uh, mad dogging the like the rowing team, like the the Australian rowing team or whatever? Just- no, honestly, like that's your time to just be normal people in the village. And as much as you're in a competition, like you kind of save that for the field, and you just or I feel like we all kind of know each other from playing with each other in our domestic mm-hmm. leagues. So you kind of just go get to hang out with your friends in a different country, which is which is really fun and. It was a little different because of COVID. We couldn't really do that, but you know, everybody finds a way. <laughs> okay, so we're we're slipping we're slipping past the the RAs then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Once you're done, all the bets are off, man. Right. All the bets are off. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to be you don't want to be the person that misses um, has to miss oh, game no. time for for you know. But yeah. But once once that final, you know, you guys you guys. So what was the drink of choice out there? What's that? <laughs> what was the drink of choice out there? we got we got contraband Uh, it it sounds like prison yeah for real yeah yeah you got like the good fellow set up uh, security going out like you gotta go through basically airports just to get into the village every time they're like go with the canadians they got the tequila yeah (laughs) Uh uh-uh not the canadians the americans got every country in the world there yeah so Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in game betting, props, and futures. 
Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B L E A V 50, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, so what was that like though? Just getting getting a chance to hang out with. Um, I mean, did you get to meet like some of the players for or like the the Olympians, um, like any sprinters or swimmers? Like, did you get a chance to to, to mingle, or was it was it like pretty uh, uh, like sectioned off? Um, we were we were a little sectioned off just because we were we competed all the way into the last day, and so our team was pretty because we were testing every day. We were very like strict about everything, so. We this we would like see people we already knew and um, we kind of kept it a safe enough distance. But I mean, it was compared to Rio, it was like you could go anywhere and do anything and talk to anybody. But it, I think because of it, it kind of got shut down a little bit. We saw everybody, but we didn't have the same kind of I'm going to go hang out with this person. Mm. That's right, because you were you were on the the, the Rio uh, Olympic team um, before as well. Yeah. Right? So yeah. So yeah. so compare those two experiences. What was that? obviously you know you the can't. yeah night and day, night mm. and day. It's wild. <laughs> COVID really really took a hit on mm. the Olympics, the Olympic experience. But at the same time, like nothing can beat coming home with gold medal. So it's all worth it after all that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and what was that reception like when you when you uh, got back to Canada? W- I mean, was was it like a super warm welcome? You know, uh, like like take us through like uh, the, the the parade yeah. or, or whatever it was that that uh, you guys. We, went I through. actually went back um, straight to club, so I didn't get to go back to Canada right oh, away. But yeah, nice. Um, when I did go back, eventually it was amazing. My family like had thrown together a party and. We're still like in the middle of like serious COVID times. So everybody was like testing to come to the party. And like, it was just, I mean, it's just like a wild thing to think about now. Cause I don't think we would be in such a strict mindset about things, but in that time, like you just, everybody wanted to be there and it was so nice. That, yeah. You just couldn't celebrate until a little bit ago, really with everybody that you loved. How was it mentally playing during COVID? Cause I heard a lot of people, it's, it's harder because you, you can't go through your uh, normal routine. How did you deal with that? Yeah, it was it, it was definitely mentally really challenging. Like I said, we were shut inside, especially traveling in hotels. We weren't allowed to leave, so you were just by yourself in your room and you weren't allowed to like go in other people's rooms, which is just kind of wild. Yeah. Like you're playing with each other all day long, like and then you have to go home and just be separated. It didn't really make sense to us, but in that you didn't want to break any rules, get your team in trouble. You didn't want to get kicked out. Like you, it was just all these things that everybody was just in fear for the majority of the time and um, didn't want to be the reason their team lost or their team got in trouble or anything. So we were following it really strictly. and It definitely took a mental toll on us, but I think our team, and I think most teams, like because you're in a team, you have those people you can rely on. I think an individual sport might've been a little bit tougher, mm. um, but we found ways to like, fill the time and keep each other like going the whole time. Like I think it was six to eight weeks of just like being with that one group of people, but technically also being alone. So it's just, it's really a weird thing to wrap your head around, but um, yeah, we had a great group of people. So that really helped. Yeah. Uh, did you have to like, keep people in check? Uh, were the people like trying to sneak off? I mean, and... people definitely, we all had days where you could tell, like, you're like, damn, that person is off. Like, we, <laughs> we have lost her today. <laughs> but we'll try again tomorrow. But yeah, we have, there's like, we have mental performance coaches and thank God for them because we would not have made it through without them. We all, I think their schedule like filled up hour to hour to hour, like people coming in for meetings. And stuff. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be crazy. Yeah. I got COVID. Yeah. Uh, during that time and I was stuck in my room for almost 14 days. I was losing it. I was posting stories just, online, talking to myself. I'm like, what is going on with me right now? He was doing, uh, he was doing the, the nose piercing uh, filter. He oh, was, he was blue eyes. Out. I had yeah. blue yeah. eyes. <laughs> I was losing it. I was a whole different person. Yo, you definitely could lose it. I was like calling home. I'm like, guys, I don't know where I am, what city, what time it is. I can't even tell what it's like outside because I'm not allowed to go. Mm. Like, it's just wild. You lose your mind a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. definitely definitely yeah but so 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 after the medal after you guys the, the gold medal game um you did you go back to, you, so you you mentioned like the you, you, that you got a chance to kind of celebrate uh in the village with everybody yeah um, so, so you went back and then you had some time to just kind of relax and, and do, do your thing yeah we went we were in the village for the most part after that our game was super late because of the heat 
Right. Um, I don't yeah. think we did kick off that. until like 10 p.m. In, wow. in Tokyo. So it was just like wild. We didn't get back to the hotel after the ceremony or to the village and after the ceremony and all that. Nobody went to sleep. Nobody slept. <laughs> There's like, it's it's really cool how they built the, the village. It's just all these like apartment buildings really for all the different countries and all the flags. And it's really, it's really cool. But there's a little platform down by the water that um, they put the statue of the rings in every village. They put this massive statue of the rings that everybody goes and takes their pictures with. And that's like, it's like the thing to do. And our team literally like we got back to the, the village, dropped all our stuff. And like without even talking, we all ended up there and just like <laughs> hung out all night and like obviously we, we had a couple of drinks and like doing our stuff down by the rings and it just was crazy because you it's you know who your friends are on the team but every single person on our team ended up there and it just kind of like made it all whole for us right. and like we got to celebrate it together i mean it was like 3 30 4 30 in the morning <laughs> we like we're on like we're just absolutely going nuts because of what had happened but like we're also hopped up on adrenaline nobody can sleep so we nice. all just we all just stayed up and watched the sunrise and it was so cool yeah, that's uh, that's a core memory right there. Yo, yeah, it's definitely a core memory I'll never forget. Yeah. And the big story there was like the cardboard beds. Yeah, How yeah. Comfortable were, they? <laughs> were they comfortable or like was it hard to sleep on those? Um, it, I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable, but it's it's a twin bed. Like no, it's never comfortable. Like that's crazy, man. <laughs> it's more the the mattress wasn't that thick, so it was like more that than the cardboard bed was so sturdy. Honestly, I was shocked. Because I was hearing about it. We weren't in the village. And I was like, why is everybody talking about these damn beds? Like, it can't be that bad. Like, we get in there. And obviously, we all had to do it. We all, like, take off all the stuff. We're like, let me see this thing. Let me right, see it. Right, and we're all right. kicking it, like, trying to break it. I'm like, damn, somebody really built this. Like, <laughs> you can't break it. <laughs> yeah, because there was videos of people jumping on them. Like, yeah, yeah. They were just they were going crazy on, on like, TikTok. Crazy. I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was wild. Um, yeah, so so what? Why you were in the village? Was there like a certain team or country that kind of took you off guard for like how, how how hard they went, like party party wise, or uh, what? what, 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 what um, give, give us some insight into that. Yeah, I'm gonna call people out all of a sudden. Uh, I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be by name. It could just nah, be, yeah. you know, <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> Ireland. Uh, no, I remember in Rio, like Jamaica was a good time. Mm. Mm. And obviously, like, um, I got to go with my home country. We threw a good party. Yeah. We had cool. We had, they, like, threw us a cute little party right in the backyard of, like, our apartment building. So, we, like, we had the Canada building. And, like, right behind it, Canada, like, threw a really cool party. And that was a good time. And everybody just got to meet everybody and hang out. And they got us, like, pizza and, you know, wine and stuff and different things. So, it was cool to just, like, go and, and meet, like, everybody within the building. Yeah. We yeah. got to do better with this a uh, food party, though, because every party is a pizza party. Y'all. I just don't get it. It's, I mean, all, pizza, it's just the what, easiest thing. Yeah, I mean, I would like some lobster. <laughs> some lobster. Bro, this guy is so bougie, dude. Like, He's you know, so bougie, know. Like, yeah. like, he always says he always talks about how he grew up in South Central, how, you know, I'm just a kid from South Central. All of a sudden he has one taste of lobster. He has one, you know, sashimi. All of a sudden this guy can't go go back to, to eat go back. Little Caesar's pizza, bro. Like, you go oh, back. Man. I mean, you got like the meal hall in the village that like is open twenty four seven. So, like, you can get any kind of food you wanted in there. Mm. there you so, go. if you really wanted it, it was more for like convenience that you didn't have to walk all the way down. Yeah, I mean, who does like a pizza party, dude? Like, come on, over the pizza parties. Oh my goodness! Oh, hell. He's mad because his class never got one uh, in elementary school. <laughs> never they got this, like, did. Cool never did. Room, so, and like this big snack room, and it had like all these fun snacks from back home. What's a great Canadian candy? Uh, we got fuzzy peaches. They're way better than peach rings. Don't even can't even compare. Oh, okay. This guy loves yeah. peach rings. Uh, Yo, yeah, no, you I haven't do. had it until you've had a fuzzy peach. Okay. We got Smarties, which are like our M and M's, right. and um, wine gums, which are good. People, some people don't like them though. Those are like British. Those are like British candies too. We yeah. have like some British candies. Like we have mm. some similar stuff, like yeah. the whole Cadbury and all those things. Right. Gotcha. But yeah. Gotcha. When you haven't had it. And you see it like we have ketchup chips, so they had like ketchup. Yeah, that dude, ketchup chips dress. are fire. And all dress dude, ketchup and all dress slap. chips. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, those are fire. I'm intrigued. Those, no, hey, I'm those wrap snacks I got. Those wrap snacks I got. Those are all dressed. Oh, uh, on our way back all from dressed, Oakland. All yeah. dressed are so good. 
so good. Dude, the, 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 I stole all the old dress. Yeah, right. so so I believe it. Yeah, so if if you get to like a certain grocery store, they'll have all ruffles. Right. They'll have the ruffles all dressed ones. But like they're very like they're very few and far between. You can't find them. But I'm yeah, like I'm right so there with I'm right there with the Canadians. Y'all y'all got y'all y'all are doing that right. And the ketchup chips. We are know fun. what we're doing up there, yeah. man. We know yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> I love ketchup. Like, so. Gotta get it. Here. <laughs> I'm intrigued. My mom still brings it for me. Like she'll pack it. Oh, uh, that's 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 awesome. <laughs> I still feel like I'm like 15. <laughs> After this, I'm an Amazon sub. Yeah, and he's about to Amazon. The... Why not? Hey, go to a Cost Plus World Ketchup Market. Chips of fire. Yeah, no, dude, that's it's, dude. They're it's so good. Top notch stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so back to the Olympics. You guys beat the uh, the U.S. A women's national team. I, I gotta represent. I'm wearing the jersey right now. I had to, you know what I mean? Like I, I gotta, I gotta represent. It hurt. Um, but, but y'all did beat them. Uh, we had to give you your credit. Um, it was, <laughs> it, you, you did your thing. You know, uh, uh, whatever. You know, we, we, we took the heat. It was, it was last summer. We've healed. You know, like it, we've had time. But now, like, so, so what's that rivalry like? Because um, you know, you're two of the top countries in the, in the world. You're going head to head, playing in the same confederation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what's it like uh, playing against the women's, not the U.S. women's national team? And um, what's the, does the intensity notch up uh, for for free all? Yeah, I think like there's an amazing rivalry there. I think for uh, for a while, I don't think they felt the rivalry as strongly as we did. But I think that's kind of shifted now. Mm -hmm. I think they they're very aware of us <laughs> <laughs> as they should be. But um, I think it's always important to have a rivalry. That's what sports are like. That's why people love sports. Like you want to be a part of that rivalry. You dream to like grow up and play in it, and you have your side, and nothing anybody ever says is going to make you change it. And like that's just like that's passion for the game. And I think like having that rivalry between the two countries is is massive. I mean we're neighbors like we're not we're not mean neighbors but you know we want we want that little nudge and make each other better type thing and I think coming from the same um, federation helps too it, it makes the teams within it um even stronger which we want to continue to push CONCACAF as, as much as we can and be one of the leading federations within the world cup and the olympics every time mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and you just took home, um, you know, top goalkeeper at the the recent W Championship, the the, the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, what was it like um, getting that honor, um, especially with such a, a pretty talented um, uh, s s like field in terms of goalkeepers? Yeah, it actually is like really talented field of goalkeepers in Concacaf. It surprises everybody every time, but at this point, I'm not surprised. I just expect them. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. always so good. <laughs> And I'm so proud, like, to be a, one of the goalkeepers in CONCACAF because I feel like we have one of the strongest groups. But um, it was – I was pretty shocked. And honestly, I think I received it based on the work of our defensive line. Like, I, I think our defensive line is just unreal. It's unmatched. And because it's a big, giant glove, they can't give it to a center back. So right, 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 <laughs> I'll take right. it and, and represent the team. But, yeah, I think the whole tournament, I think maybe, like, the last two games is when I had to step up and really, like, push for my team but it's a tournament and there's so many games that they stood on their heads and 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 made us go all the way yeah it's interesting because um you know obviously the 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 a big uh, metric to, to measure a, a keeper's clean sheets right and like clean sheets is is a team it's like a team effort right because yeah. you know, there's gonna be times where you're gonna bail out the team there's gonna be times where you know your, your back line is gonna bail out the team um, and there's, there's games where some keepers have, uh, you know, you can have a really good game and give up, you know, and, and, and concede a goal or have, you know, make a couple of mistakes and get lucky and, and, and have, you know, a defender bail you out or two and, and, and keep a clean sheet. So how do yeah. you kind of, um, uh, like navigate that kind of scrutiny that comes with, uh, goalkeeping? Because I feel like it's a lot of times like kind of a thankless position. Yeah, I mean, you're either like the hero or the villain, right. and there's like no in between. <laughs> right, Which right. It, it can be, it can be terrible. It can be great, but I think, and I'm still working on it. But it's such a mental game and it's such a mental strength to be able to like live in our position and handle everything that gets thrown at you, both on the field and off. And um, like I said, I'm still working on it. But at the end of the day, you got to find your value outside of the game and and know like that you're bigger than just what day you play and the score of at the end of the day. And um, it is really hard to come to terms with that. And I'll never make it sound easy because <laughs> that sounds so easy coming out of my mouth. Like, 
even for me, I'm like, damn, why don't I just do that? Right. But, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like life or death every time you step on the field because you're like a competitor, you're ingrained to give everything. And that means all of your emotions and all of your mental power. And um, as I, as much as everybody will say, you know, it's, there's 11 people on the field, you're always going to feel that like responsibility. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely like sitting back and because I'm not within the confines of the of the white lines or within my 90 minutes right now, I can easily say, yeah, 11 people on the field, we all got to work together, we all win, we all lose. Right. Um, but it definitely, it definitely is something that I'll probably be working on the rest of my career and I have been working on. So it's not, it's not an easy thing by any means. So outside of the field, what do you do for you for you to uh, de-stress when, from such a stressful position that you have as a keeper? Yeah, I mean, like, I work with a lot of different mental performance coaches on it. I think finding, like, your distractions and, and things that you love outside the game are really important as well. I used to be, like, so blinded and just, like, practice, 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 games, 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 soccer, soccer, soccer. And, like, I was happy, but I, I was I was too much on this roller coaster of, the the result influenced the rest of my life and how I could go to bed that night or how I'd wake up the next morning and I kind of had to get off that and find find a way to like actually enjoy the rest of life (laughs) and not get stuck on the game and as much as it's still like I, I don't think I've lost any passion within that but I've been able to find things outside of the game that that also are important to me and that you know I want to live for and not just get stuck on I would like ruin family events because I'd be like, oh, I'm still thinking about that game and like, <laughs> I can't get in my head. Um, but yeah, it's just, I'll, I'll be continuing to find different ways to, to deal with it. But I think finding your own personal distractions, whether that's like, I love my dog. I'm going to go take her to the park and really <laughs> focus on her and the energy on her. And or I'm going to, I'm going to go out with my fiance and like, well, I'm just going to focus on her for tonight and this next hour is the most important or honestly, I'm just going to sit here and I want to watch a movie and I'm just going to blank out and I'm going to enjoy it. Like just finding things that you love and you enjoy and, and really committing the time to that. And again, that sounds so easy, but it's not. <laughs> right, right, right. right. What, what's your go-to comfort movie to, to throw on? Oh man, I, that's tough. I don't love watching movies. Like, again, I just love that. Like, honestly, thank God for Netflix putting out crap movies every oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it doesn't even have to be a good movie. I just need to watch something so I can like, you know, zone out. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix, that they definitely have the quantity on lock. They have the quantity. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. The quality. <laughs> I mean, the quality is like spotty. Uh, uh, every yeah. once in a while, you'll, you'll, you'll catch a it's gem. Really good or really bad. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. You uh, get a gem and then yeah. you're like, Wow, I can't make it through the next two minutes. <laughs> I was watching I Am a Killer last night. I am what? A killer? I, a killer? Like okay. interviews with killers? Like, oh, so yeah, I saw that yeah, pop up. I have not slept. Oh, Scared. I can't do that. I will not watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Just close your windows. <laughs> That's all I got from that episode. Close your windows. I People watching the, like, I was involved in a crime or something one. I'm not. I, 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 I stay oh, away from the true crime it, stuff. It's like real stories of like people who were involved in crimes. And I was like, that could happen to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, I think so. Like my, my, my girlfriend, she loves the true crime stuff. She, she's all about that stuff, but she won't oh, watch yeah. like a scary movie. And to me, like the true sto- like the true, the, like the true crime stuff, that's way scarier to me. That's way like, I, I cannot watch any of that stuff. Cause that stuff actually happened. And you know what I mean? That's yeah. like, like you said, people climbing through windows, like at the, <laughs> the Cecil Hotel stuff where, you know, uh, girls getting the trapped in the, yeah, that's down the street from yeah. here. Girls getting trapped in the, in the, in the water tank. Like I cannot watch that, that kind of stuff that, you know, like, but yeah. put on a good horror, horror, horror movie. And you know, I, I I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> nope. I can, I can do the real stuff, but yeah, see, movies, like, I don't understand. I don't it's understand. It's so weird. My cousin showed me I... it. My cousin showed me it as a, 10 year old it? oh the old it <laughs> yeah the old it i don't like clowns <laughs> well clowns oh, are, no. yeah, yeah clowns like by themselves like that's scary nah you're yeah. you're crazy if you think clowns are fun <laughs> <laughs> what are we five <laughs> no but like uh do you play any any sports other than soccer outside the field um like now yeah i mean not really i think sometimes like my friend and i will go shoot hoops across the street and stuff mm. just like not like competitively, but well, like I, I love to just go outside and do fun things. And, you know, my girl or my fiance played softball in college. So every once in a while we'll go out have catch. She'll, oh, nice. she'll show me what she did. 
Yeah, back right, in the day. right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a little bit of a uh, like a competitive edge between you? I mean, both being like oh, pretty high level so athletes. So competitive. Yeah. I'm actually like better at not being competitive off the field these days, but she's so competitive. So I just got to like match it. Right, especially like can't, going up. Can't lose. Right, going up against like an Olympic gold medalist. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm sure. Yeah, then everybody's gonna talk crap. And we right. Start, you know. I beat the gold medals at XYZ. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then you just gotta, you just gotta pull the medal and just. You gotta pull out the medal, yeah. Yeah. Trash talk a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying, but. Uh, <laughs> babe, one reason you're not better than me, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but back to the Canadian national team. Um, that the team that won the gold medal. I mean, there's um, a lot of kind of like really experienced and um, you know like pretty like like well established players um in in you know Stephanie LeBay the, the the goalkeeper that um you played with and um um Christine Sinclair like what what is it like playing with players of that kind of stature and what have you picked up from from them whether it's their habits or the way they carry themselves or just any pieces of advice that they gave they gave to you it's it is pretty crazy like playing with them because i had them all posters on my walls growing up as kid mm. as a kid and like i wanted to be them and like just even meet them be in the room with them and, like they were my idols and um they still are honestly um they're just such incredible people but yeah i had like every sinky poster known to mm. man at <laughs> like age 10 i was like i'm going to be <laughs> i'm not but <laughs> i mean you're you're, but, you're saving shots from her yeah, so, yeah exactly yeah. honestly it was like i was always this one like core memory speaking of core memories that like was probably like my second camp ever and we were practicing like pks and stuff and i like saved two of hers <laughs> and i was like what the hell is going on <laughs> like i just like had an out-of-body experience of like me as like a 10 year old being like dude go get her autograph right <laughs> <laughs> I was just like that's such a wild memory and like it's, it's it is really cool to be able to play with your heroes and I've learned so much from them and um just as people and I think the piece off the field too like they kind of remind the younger players because when you're young and like you're ambitious and you would you'll do anything to get what you want and like that's an amazing thing but you're missing out on a lot mm. because you're just like so blinders on and and focused in I think they they're really good at reminding us like you you've worked so hard to achieve something and like maybe just like take a look real quick just like maybe look around and see where you are and enjoy it for five seconds the hard work's not going to stop we have everybody barking down our door to make sure we don't stop doing the hard work and it's not the kind of people that you are if you've made it this far to not ever to just stop doing hard work and like stop really caring so it is important to to enjoy it and 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 be there with the people who are you're there with and yeah they're just obviously they're great athletes like they're, they're literally the best in the world Cynthia has the most goals in the world for anybody like anyone it's, yeah that's crazy it's, it's insane yeah, like she's yeah. literally i'm begging her to, to top the next one of the caps i'm like you got to stay i'm like 33 games 33 yeah. games you're <laughs> almost there she's like no nah, i got one year one year left i'm now nah, you don't yeah we'll see we'll see i'm gonna make her drag it out yeah, Hell, that's all, we're yeah. breaking records and by you i mean we <laughs> yeah right right yeah <laughs> you're you got to take some kind of credit for that if she stays on Hell yeah if I and you know her. right yeah exactly I'm like 90th minute sub subarin yeah cap. <laughs> yeah we need we need some caps we need these caps uh did you like, play broke one record there's another one right around the corner go smash it Right, exactly. There it is. I mean, like, there's levels. There's levels, and she's. I mean, there's. There's only so much that she can get. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. She's already... This is the last one, really. Right. It's the right. Thing. Yeah. Everything else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever play with uh with Lauren Susselman? I didn't actually. I was the year after her, which is crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because because we had her. We had her on the podcast previously. Uh, she's she's yeah, a friend she's, of ours. And, she's great. Um, I yeah. like. I obviously like know her just from the soccer world, but yeah, we missed each other by like a year. Oh yeah, yeah. She's always she's always like talking mess about Can uh, the Canadian team and uh, she's, <laughs> she's you know so so it's uh, it, yeah. I'll she goes hard for Can Canada, trashes America. <laughs> <laughs> you got to man, you got to our good old USA. But uh, no, she's great. 
Uh, but speaking of Canada, the the um, with the the men's World Cup is, is is coming up this year, and there's obviously been a lot of hype about uh, the, the Canadian men's team with you know a lot of the the quote unquote golden age that they're that they're going through right now. Super um, young talent. Yeah, a lot of a lot of high like high level young talent that are getting the job done in in, in Europe or even in MLS. Um, so so what what's your take on on the the, the men's side of things, and uh, what are you excited for most heading into this winter in Qatar? Yeah, I think it's massive that they've they've done it and they've they've qualified for the World Cup and it's going to be huge for Canada soccer them going in and and proving that we're we're forces in the soccer world and I think you know we've been able to hold on to it for quite a while <laughs> and they they've been there but they just have to, they've been right underneath that cusp of you know world level um, and obviously we want we want the whole of Canada to be something to reckon with in the sporting world. And um, I think now that they're in this, this quote unquote golden age, it's amazing to see the talent that we've been able to produce. And I think it'll give not just the little girls growing up, know they can play soccer, but for Canada, like that's a dream that boys can, can have now. And I think before a lot of like little boys growing up, I just remember them being like trying to find, find out what their grandparents were like you know use a heritage card of like oh, right. I, I got a passport to xyz right right and i think now it's a really prideful thing to to play for canada on both sides and i think i think for a while it's it's always been a prideful thing to play for canada for, for women but um i think it's a, it's becoming bigger for men and if we can you know take this young group of talented guys that we have and really to the world what we're capable of I think it'll be a, a bigger path and we can continue to kind of push it on both sides yeah yeah I mean do, do, you, do you ever get a chance to, to um, either train alongside them or with them um, <laughs> no that... I, honestly we have like really opposite FIFA windows and uh, yeah. we never really overlap too much I think there's like certain events here and there that like a few of us will overlap but yeah training wise we, we've never actually overlapped which is wild yeah yeah, yeah, because for so long, the only thing I knew about men's soccer was Steve Nash. <laughs> that was the oh, best thing he had. had. We know it too. It's okay. Hey man, this guy used that line of uh, I don't know. I, I think you're familiar with Darby, Darby Magazine. Uh, yeah. So, oh, so, so yeah. So oh my goodness, man, this guy just came out hot. Like literally, I think that might have been one of the first things that he said. Uh, they, on that start, they, they started it. Yeah. <laughs> he they says, started. He said they started. Oh, of course they did. But of course they, did. <laughs> they said Maple Leaf Mafia. Yeah. He said, <laughs> right. No, man. Uh, Listen, yeah. it's, it's painful. There's no need for anybody to taunt Maple Leaf fans. Like, you're in so much pain as it is. You don't need to give us anymore. Right, right. No, but there's more than Steve Nash now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now no, the, uh, yeah, the, the he, team is, is scary. Uh, women and men, like, the, both teams are so scary super talented so it is and it's amazing though because it was used to be the rivalry used to be mexico usa but canada came in and said forget you guys we are here yeah it's our turn look at us now and they're controlling both out. sides right now yeah. yeah and it sucks to say because usa all the way but canada's in the last few years has been their their territory yeah yeah definitely i think you've just seen it the investment into it and just the individuals on the team they've just stepped up massively so. When do you think that change happened, though? I honestly don't know, because I feel like they're all still so young, so I feel like we're just in the middle of it. Right. Like, it's yeah. just happening. I don't think we're near where they're going to peak at. For I sure. I think this is just the beginning. Ideally, it's just the beginning, but it's just the first time that we're really starting to see them, like, make a stance in, in the soccer world on the men's side. And, um, yeah, I think I don't think we're near their peak. I think we'll, they'll, be, they'll definitely be, like, a little bit of this, but – little bit of ups and downs um but ultimately i don't think this is just a one-off i think they're we're in the middle of watching them and, and seeing the turnover i don't think there's i don't know honestly what what the turning point was what about women's soccer when do you think that change happened because if i'm not mistaken a lot of the canadian team was uh canadian uh people playing in the u.s that, from canadian heritage that went back and played or am i mistaken yeah, I think we've had a few that have done that. And I think we started to see like a little bit more of the investment into women's soccer within the country. I think we, we're still demanding a lot more and, and following in the footsteps of a lot of other countries, unfortunately. Right. Like we would always want to, you always want to be the first to do something, but we've kind of missed that boat a little bit. 
Um, and by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. And <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting farther and farther down that list the longer this takes. But I think we're starting, once you get that investment, you start to see the growth with, that you can achieve in the game. And I think as soon as we started to see that, obviously we, we, we had a bit of a switch within personnel and coaching staff and all that in, in 20, in 20. Yeah. And it, it definitely was a mental shift and, and just a tactical shift as well. And working with different coaches, things change, but I think the more we can see these younger players who come in and you can see it in the last camp when we were in Australia, we had a lot of different players coming in, a lot of new names, a lot of young talent. And the more we can invest in the, in bringing those kids that are coming up and, you know, how we develop them, the better this team's going to thrive for longevity and not just one off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and then you mentioned, you know, uh, following in the footsteps, um, you, you, you like to be a trailblazer, but you know, the, I mean, it, it's, it's not going to happen all the time for, for everything, you know what I mean? So, uh, but, but when it comes to that, um, Big news in, in U.S. women's soccer was the, the equal pay settlement that um, uh, was was recently signed. Uh, what was your whole t what was your take on, all, on on that whole thing, and um, how um, as a, a, a federation um, are, are you pushing to to get that um, a, something similar in in Canada? Is yeah, we're we're or? yeah. It was incredible to see that. I think it's such a massive statement, and they deserve it a hundred and ten percent. They've done incredible things, not just in a couple past years but in many many years right. and for decades, four decades. many years right. they've just been incredible for a long period of time and haven't gotten what they've deserved out of it and it is really promising to see everything that they've fought for really pay off and obviously as like a, a rival country you're always you know itching at each other and, and trying to get the upper hand in some way but Ultimately, when you see things like that, that are just bigger than, than the 90 minutes that you're going to play each other on the field, you, you have to have like a little bit of, of pride in that and, and just be impressed and um, congratulate what they've been able to accomplish. And I think there's been many other countries, Brazil, Australia, England, who have kind of followed in those footsteps as well. And right, right. Um, they've done incredible things fighting their federations and it shouldn't have to be a fight. And I think for some of them, it wasn't, but ultimately sometimes it is. And we are doing a lot of work behind the scenes in ours, and we have an amazing group of players on our team that are working with lawyers and, and trying to make sure that, and obviously the men are going through it as well. They've been really vocal about that. And yeah. um, ideally we want to do this the best for both teams. And um, we are trying to be on the same page with them and, and make sure that everything goes smoothly. So hopefully within the next little while, we'll have, we'll have caught up with where we should be and you know, be in the top tiers of just equality across the globe. I think that's the one thing we we try to be so we're so great as Canada and and you know equal and we give everybody a fair chance. We love everybody and we're you know we have this like rapport as being that kind of people, your friendly neighbors. But we obviously aren't there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you look at what we're doing within the with inside the borders, like it's not, we're missing out. Like we're, right. we're missing something and right. it's not just in soccer. It's in so many different things. So we're going to fight until we get what we know we deserve. Right. You got to put that into action. Damn right. Right. Just tell Ramsey. <laughs> Ramsey is a great writer. He'll send a few emails out. He'll make it happen. Come on, Ramsey. I believe hey. you. That's and Ramsey, we trust. Lawyer's phone number. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's a little too much to put. Uh, there's nah, a lot. Of, yeah. Don't no, put it Ramsey. in the hands of the. I'm not even getting involved. Like, put right. it in the hands of the professionals. Right. Ramsey's exactly. the guy, head editor of uh, Urban Pitch. <laughs> this is the man right here. <laughs> this Bro, is the man get right out of here, man. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a gold medal, but he's great with typing. Like, <laughs> this guy right here. This right. guy. Right. Yeah. I, I can get to 90 words a minute. You know. What I mean? like, uh, uh, Twitter figure right here. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good at pressing enter and return. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but so let's switch things over to the, the, the club side of things, right? Because, you know, new, new club this year, expansion side in, in uh, San Diego. Um, what, what are the vibes like? Uh, we had Katie Johnson on a, a couple weeks ago. She said, you know, it's, it's all business, you know, very business, professional, uh, professionally minded out there. Um, so, Do you so, guys smile when you're... Yeah, are you allowed to have fun? <laughs> uh, like, 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 what are the vibes? What's the vibes? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like being back in prison in Tokyo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, it's, it's such a great club. Like, it is very business. So I'm sure she, like 
K Joe's great. I, I played with K Joe back in Sky Blue back in the right, day. So right, right. We've known each other for a while, but it definitely is a very professional environment, but they're doing it right. Like they're they're setting up everything the best in the best way possible. And we've obviously got off to a real running start, which is incredible for an yeah. expansion team. Right. And we're all really proud to be a part of it. But I think like just when you're within the rooms that we're in, like you can just feel the difference of how strong the group is. And it's something really special to be a part of. And I think that comes down to what Casey put together. She's just, she's right. an amazing coach. And yeah. we, we're all like, I have nothing bad to say. Like she's, she is an incredible coach. I think she, she's really smart on the field, but honestly the way that she handles the team off the field is what I think is the biggest game changer. Yeah. Um, she's, she's pretty yeah, intense. Been, she's pretty intense. She's intense, man. Yeah. Like, you don't know want to piss her off right but at the same time because of that like i just want to like make her proud you know like right. you get that sense of like i really want to do everything i can for you and like i think when you have that in your players is the most ideal that a team can be because then you got everybody working really hard for the same thing they just want to you know do everything they can for her yeah. and she's kind of instilled that since day one and when we have all 25 26 players that we have right now working towards that like that's powerful man Yes, yes, we are allowed to smile though sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Just, sometimes, just between sometimes. just between twelve and twelve thirty, and then yeah. <laughs> twelve thirty, everybody stop. Yeah, yeah, but oh, I oh mean, oh my god, eleven fifty nine. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> but that's when that's when smiling like when you're not allowed to smile, that's when you want to smile even more. Oh yeah, that's when like yeah. one person smiles, you, yeah. then you lose it. You yeah, just lose right. It. <laughs> yeah, but but going back to Casey, um, there, I mean, there'll be times where. Um, like there'll be a hot mic on 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 the sideline, and you'll from the broadcast you'll hear you know just her like like yelling yeah. something out you know. Um, what's it like to play? And also also like a quick aside, fit like her fits on the sideline oh on, point. on point. She's she's uh, like uh, always like, on point. Yeah, yeah, Katie's but coats, man. She's always got to dude do, that like, like, like coat game. I mean, you're in San Diego. Like, I mean, in Manchester, like, in Manchester like, made sense, it's like, right? It's like 85 degrees with <laughs> lasers. But I, I can't even blame her because it looks good. Business. It's all business. <laughs> it's all business. It's yeah, all serious right. business. No, she's got some choice words. They should probably move those mics. <laughs> <laughs> you you had some choice words too. I think it was, was it after the game? Where, yeah. Uh, except yeah. <laughs> I, my choice words weren't even that bad. We're going to take a look at what right. has happened recently in the R league. And right. Yeah. yeah. Reflections. <laughs> Reflections. <laughs> I'm not over it still. Uh, there's there's some I could tell there's some unresolved uh, there's some unresolved things that that are going on. Ridiculous. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I don't think I can say anymore anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I cuz yeah, because I don't think like cuz I was watching that game and then yeah. I think I saw on, on maybe before the next game it said you were suspended. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, yeah. what? Like, what? What happened? And then, and then I, and then I, like, I went back and I saw, you know, there's like, uh, you know, people were, were, were talking about it. Um, yeah, but, leave it no comment. Let's not suspend you. Hey, again. This, no, but if you want to <laughs> no, talk he's about a big records, Angel City fans, so like, he's trying to get something out of you, so you won't play the game <laughs> on Sunday. This guy has a season ticket holder for Angel City, so he's just doing this on purpose. Don't I'm not. Try, don't no, I'm, not I'm not trying to stir pots here. I'm not don't trying to stir pots. This no. guy is smart. <laughs> Yeah. No, I wasn't even. Try to be nice, man. No, I was nice not. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. I was not trying to stir pots there. I was not. If anything, this guy knows any a lot more about red cards than than anyone else. This guy's a rec league uh, red card record holder. Um, it's not that. Um, I'm an enforcer, so if I feel like you hurt my uh, teammate, yes, in yeah. teammate, mm -hmm. I, I will go in. Uh, and sometimes uh, I'm out of shape now. I played college soccer ten years ago, <laughs> so I can't control my body now. So if I go that's the worst hard, kind of player to play no, against. Wait, wait, that's, like, that's the type of guy that's I gonna get you hurt. I, I can't stop my body from going forward sometimes. <laughs> so if I accidentally leg up to the chest, wasn't my fault. I'm not that flexible. I can't bring it down that fast not anymore. That flexible. <laughs> so it that's, happened. No, yeah. he's he's talking about it because uh, he posted a, a video, and one guy was like. Hey, I just played against that guy. He got a red card. Yeah. All true. Yeah. But it was the ref. The ref didn't know what he was calling. Sunday league refs. They don't know. 
They don't, they're not good refs. Say the same about you know some some other refs uh, elsewhere too. But uh, you know. I'm not commenting with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Angel no. City. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about Angel City because I, obviously I, I, big ask him where his season season. tickets are, uh, yeah. seats are at. Yeah, well, I'm I'm right. I'm in the supporter section, so uh, you know I was giving you some I was giving you some grief um, a couple weeks back when you when y'all were in LA. Um, I forgot. I forgot the the outcome of that game. Um, it, it, it eludes me. Such a um, good fan, man. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, I just don't remember if, if it was a rivalry game um, when we played you guys. And I think yeah, uh, it's so cool no, because but, I obviously you don't remember much because I wasn't there. So <laughs> right, let, right, let, right. Let's talk about your ex teammate though, Didi. She played a heck of a game that game. Um, give her credit for that game. Um, but how, how do you see her, how do you see her now? How much she's grown as a goalkeeper. Sorry, did you say Didi? I just didn't hear. Didi, yeah, yeah, Didi, Didi yeah. Heritage, yeah. Yeah, she's grown massively. I think um, this has like been a great opportunity for her to like step in and um, just grab hold of that spot and and take it and kind of make it her own and and grow in that position. I think it's been it's been cool watching her like become the goalkeeper that she is, and I think given this opportunity like it's massive she's really run with it and you can see her like personality coming out more now when she's playing and and more of just like her on the ball and not just you know I think sometimes when you're only given a game here a game there as a backup for years like you you kind of have to play to what your coach is wanting you to do and mm -hmm. and you try to like make these little impressions here and it's hard to really like and I know I know from like playing behind Steph for years like it's hard yeah. it is tough it's a tough place to be but um, I think now we're starting to see her come out of her shell and it, and it's awesome to see her like just expand her abilities within within the goal and, and with her feet. And I think, like I said, I think it's just hard from the position that she was in before. And now we're really getting to see a coach. Obviously, Freya trusts her and Dan trusts her. And yeah. um, that trust is monumental to a goalkeeper. I think when you have that, you can kind of play the game how you really want to play it. And not that there won't be like a consequence or anything, but you're not worried about what's going to happen. You, sure. you want to play and, and try things. And I think that's, that's ideally when we're the best that we can be as goalkeepers is when we can just play the game when we see and not be thinking uh, ex like people want me to do this. They want me to see this. They want me to look for this or like, and I think that's where she was before. And I think like mm -hmm. now it's just, it's amazing to see her grow. So I'm really, I want to say proud, but I, it's also just, I'm just, it's amazing to see goalkeepers grow and, and she's going to make the game better. Yeah. yeah. All right, now for some trash talking, what do you guys got to say about Angel City? Yeah, I mean, hey. so, so, hey. so. Yes! Yes! <laughs> big, so, so big it. rivalry I game. So it. we're recording this on Wednesday. This is going to come out after the game this weekend. What um, will the score be? I don't care nah, nah, What's nah, the score? Nah, Final nah, nah. score. <laughs> so, so. I mean, you the game's already sold out. That one, huh? Yeah. No, no, I'm going. I'm gonna going to be there. Going. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to be where there. They, where they put you all the way at the top? I know uh, they're holding on to those. They were like Angel City. They there want we go. I love this. Hey, all right. Defend okay. Defend yourself. This is, this no, is, no, I'm, no. I'm so so we're, we're, we're making the trip down. We're going to black out the Snapdragon. Um, you know, it's going to be a thing. Uh, and then we're going to take the W, and we're going we're gonna to make the drive back up home on Sunday. Um, I but, don't know. If you, just, you just watch them. They just played. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, listen. Um... You there was a Miss PK you call. Ask, no, you the, ask your friend what 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 just happened. We uh, just, you know, two hours was, ago. Yeah, so it was it was a Miss PK call, um, and and, and um, so that's there's there's that. But anyways, so let's talk about let's you talk about this. Trash talk no, you want to trash No, I'm not trash. Like two hours so ago. no, so so I'm not <laughs> trash talking. I'm not. This guy's You're stirring pot. Yourself. I'm trying to. No, no, no. I'm You're trying to. I'm punched, trying to have a good conversation about this weekend, and I'm just being met with antagonism on both sides. On the guy who's supposed to be on my side. I'm on your side. No, this is literally. He's sitting to my right. This is my right hand man, and he's he's you know he's throwing darts at me. Like what's going on? Nah, here? there's no hate. See, this is why people love sports, man. Yeah, I mean, I I love it too. But so big game. Finally, if we can get to this. Well, game sold out. Be? First game opening uh, opening match at the new home sta uh, home stadium. I can't even talk right. Sold out. Oh, sold so out. Excited. Gonna, so yeah, so, so what, yeah, I know. Yeah, so, 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 what, so what's going through your head? Part. Like what like what uh, what are you excited for the most um, for, for, yeah. for that game? It's I mean, obviously, I think they, they are a great team. So it is going to be a really great game and it's going to be super competitive. So it's always it's always good to be a part of those kind of games and creating new rivalries again and being a part of something that like that is is what we want to kind of create for for people to like want to grow up and be a part of 
Um, but ultimately, like playing in front of that crowd is going to be amazing. We're going to set a record for the league, and yeah. um, hopefully, it'll take years for anybody to come and top it. <laughs> and hopefully, when they do, it's it's just us again. Right. Uh, <laughs> Somehow yeah, building a, a new wing on, on the yeah, stadium. Yeah, we'll just like right? build another wing, or we'll just like yeah. add a little hill, and people can go sit on it. Right. And count right. <laughs> But yeah, I think like it's just it's such a great step forward for our league and for everything that we're trying to build and continue to grow upon. Like just even watching the game or the games earlier, Kansas City showing their their new yeah. stadium. It yeah. looks incredible and all the the work they're doing to build the facilities and to just like raise the standard. I think it's massive. The more that we keep like this competition of raising that kind of standard going, the bit the better this league is gonna be and the better um this opportunity is going to be for for people after us to to really be professional athletes and to have the opportunity and have more opportunities because it won't just be like when I joined it was 10 teams and then it went down to eight and then it was mm. nine and then it was 10 now we're at 12 like it won't just be potentially eight teams which is like less than 2,000 people right. having that opportunity which is right. is crazy yeah I mean and the growth of the league has been incredible to see you know as the yeah. years have gone by especially i mean even in, in just the last couple of couple of years with yeah, um, you massive. know with the, with, with the, the new expansion and, and 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 the ones that are planned and and, and are going to come in future um so what were some things that you still want to see uh from the league um uh to to improve and, and, and to grow what are some areas you know obviously you know where we've gotten is is, is great but where would you like to see um continuing to, to to improve yeah i think just like reiterating that like the the competition of like who's got the best facilities and like stadiums mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. something we just need to continue like i love i love seeing that commercial of of the casey current stadium that's going to be downtown like that's going to be so cool and like seeing just being able to play at the bank next year like, like continuing those kind of things like and continuing setting tr setting records and attendance that's those kind of things are mandatory. Like we need that to keep growing the game, but ultimately we also need more teams. Like we, we need to bring more teams into this league. We need to bring more opportunities. And um, every time we do, it obviously proves to be working. Like look at, look at Angel City, look at San Diego, look at even Kansas last year. Like those yeah. teams are, are really thriving and they're providing environments that just want to grow and are begging to grow. And so obviously we need to continue bringing in more teams and we can see, more of these teams flourish in the league and, and create that competition. And ultimately my, I, I would love to see us playing, um, just playing longer and playing more and, and having a league that is withstanding the whole year and sustaining us the whole year. And I think we're really, really close to everyone being able to do that. I think we're, I think there's like levels right now of people yeah. in the league and it's easy. Like once you get out of a level to forget, um, but ultimately there are still people in this league that like, it is hard just to sustain a whole year just off what we do. For sure. So and it's, it's not impossible. It did used to be impossible. I was still part of the league when that was impossible. <laughs> I'm dating myself, but <laughs> like now we're starting to see that growth and it's massive. Like, I think we need to continue to raise that that minimum, raise the opportunities and, and continue to push what what things can be created for us in this world, of, like within the soccer world. But yeah, ultimately that just comes down to more teams. You know, it'd be really cool though, like way off dream, probably will be probably won't be playing at this point, but to have like divisions like in England or in, right. in France and, and have that relegation and promotion right. and that yeah. competition and I that's a whole that's, that's a whole nother a whole can nother of worms. Thing, that's that, a whole nother ball because, game. We're just trying to right. fill this league. Yeah. We're at twelve. We need at yeah. least eight more before we can even start thinking about it. Yeah, well the, the USL the USL just started a, a, a women's league this year too. So that's promising to yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if and, they can if that starts to like kind of catch catch on and like we can start to build that really a lot, we can kind of like take, okay, well, maybe the winner gets to go up and lose has to go down. You know, sure, like maybe we can yeah. start playing with that and really providing more opportunities because that's also an incentive to just be the best at what you do. And mm, yeah. ultimately that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to grow the league is just being badasses on the field. Yeah, like that's yeah. what people want to see. They want to see goals and saves and that's, what's going to draw people's attention. Right.
Yeah, we'll see how it goes this Saturday. Because I did forget that you weren't at the she last has, matchup between the yeah, two. You're, you're on, you're on uh, international duty. That's right. So, so now that you're gonna now, now it might be now it might it might be, be an nice. actual challenge It'll for us. Nice. So it might be an actual challenge for us this time. <laughs> he is. Around. He's antagonizing me, so, man. So. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like this guy is just trying to. No, he's no, like, the thing is I'm like, getting, right. I'm getting darts right here. Just the, the thing uh, is, like, in the ribs. No, like I grew up in a household. My mom was like, if a kid messes with you, put gum in your hair. So I'm telling him. No one's messing with anyone. Yeah. 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 So I just feel attacked. So I'm defending myself. Gotta <laughs> defend my team. You talk about being an enforcer. I grew up watching Ty Dome. You talk about the best enforcer ever. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. protect my team. <laughs> there you go. No, there you go. Uh, yeah. You have a great team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at him. He's, he's a shell of himself now. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, listen, though, um, <laughs> we, 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 we'd love to keep this going. I know, um, uh, you know you got stuff to do. We got stuff to do. But before we wrap things he up. He has to go do a little banner like, go Angel City. Yeah, like, yeah. No, it's no. Not, well, it's a busy night. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta get on. I gotta, I'm on TIFO duty, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm, I'm making I can't TIFO. wait. <laughs> I can't. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but no. But before we wrap things up, we we do a little thing where Julio, uh, we we get some rapid fire questions, put you in the hot seat. Um, okay. Uh, so so nothing he, bad. Yeah. I mean, it won't be anything bad. It's just you know something, some super quick questions. Nothing bad. We can wrap things up. Well, who's yeah. gonna win? San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Score. Yeah. <laughs> ah, two nothing. Ooh, Ooh, clean sheet. All right, clean sheet. Uh, playlist before getting into the stadium. What are you listening to? Uh. Becky Hill and Sagala. Uh, no, don't I don't know. You're gonna have no. to look it up. Yeah, that one's. Yeah, right. I, 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 she got to put us on game for for the. Yeah, for the, uh, perfect fit for the before going to the game. What makes you feel that confidence? Honestly, we just got these we are BG shirts, so I think we're gonna mm. do that with a pair of dunks. Nice. All right. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nice shoes. Bad fit. Bad fit. Nice shoes. Bad fit, nice juice. That's that's a common answer. All right. Best place, yeah. yeah. Best place to eat in San Diego. Best what? Best place to eat in San Diego. Oh my goodness, there's way too many. I don't know. Uh, what kind of food do you want? What is your favorite food? Number one spot you have to yeah. go to. I'm gonna be there this weekend, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. Oh, everybody says El Gordo, but like those tacos are great. But like you can, I like this little place called Rudy's. It's Rudy's. like this little shack. All right. Okay. I All hope right. it doesn't give me food. She's trying to give me food poisoning. That's what, that's what <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. I ate it. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Listen, to LA with your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> now she's Who's the bougie one now? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last one. Last one. Uh, best fan. Best. Uh, besides San Diego, who got good fan base in the league? Memorable. Ooh, besides San Diego. Besides yeah. Besides San, Di San Diego. Uh, I feel like Portland's been strong for a long time. Yeah, but Angel yeah. City's up there to compete, man. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, sir. They're strong. Yes, sir. Number yes, sir. one in the league. Yes, Number sir. League. I'm not All gonna right, lie. For... They're they're going pretty strong right now. But Portland's been there for a long time. Yeah, they got the yeah. longevity over yeah. you guys right now. Yeah, I, I'm not. Even mad a couple at that. years. A couple. I'm not years. mad at that. I'm not mad at that. All right, last question. Can uh Ramsey take a picture with you after the game? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll, right. We're good. We're good. All right. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. We all banter. It's right. All oh yeah. No. No. There's no. 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 None whatsoever. I love it. I love it. I was just more like I was just trying to have a conversation, and I was being antagonized on both sides here. Woo, woo, that, woo. that was the only issue First that all, I had. I'm not right. antagonized. I was defending. No, you it's were. What I do. I'm a goalkeeper. Okay. I'm defending. Listen. She was listen. spitting facts. What's up? Back to her side, he's like, yeah. such a traitor, <laughs> such a traitor. She yeah. was just defending two face. herself. No, he's two face. That's that's what I have to deal with uh, I'm, I'm, week in and week out. San Diego, Honestly, good luck. You found that. a new fan. I know. You found, I know. A new, you found a new fan. Let's yeah. go, San Diego. <laughs> Man. Oh, God. Like, oh, my awesome. goodness. Okay. All right. Kaylin, thank you again. Thank you so uh, much. This is so much thank fun. You, um, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, seeing, seeing you continue to grow and, you know, more big things to come. Uh, you know, keep it tapped in here. We got more big things to come too. Uh, but until next time, for Kaylin Sharon and Julio Monterosa, I'm Ramsey Albuchala. This has been the Urban Pitch Podcast, the beautiful game of life, part of the Believe Network. We'll see y'all next time. We out.